Now, help me understand this third wave of convergence um, better. What, what's playing out here? Well, when we talk about uh, convergence, really what we're saying is that there's massive convergence between media, between the various players that are competing in the, um, in the entertainment and media um, industry. And maybe just give you an example, because I think that's always um, an easy way to, uh, uh, to reflect this, is if you think about, for example, someone like um, Amazon, which started off life as an internet retailer, uh, Disney, which was really a content producer, and uh, Netflix, which was a DVD by mail you know, rental company. If we look at where those companies are uh, today, we see that they're actually simultaneously now content uh, producers, distributors, and retailers. And so there's a massive convergence in terms of the players that we have within the entertainment and media space. Um, and the interaction with technology is, is, is enormous. So we really see four types of convergence happening at the moment. Uh, media convergence, uh, in terms of all these uh, different players and the blurring between media segments. Um, so to give you an example of that, newspaper articles in the past were typically just text. Now you will see a, a newspaper investigative you know, series containing text, video, um, and likely some other sort of streaming, you know, streaming uh, component to it, something like a podcast. So there's a blurring between the media items. There's blurring from an access perspective as well. So the uh, distinctions that you had in the past with regard to you know, wired, wireless, cable, satellite, those are, all, uh, those are all disappearing. You've got your telcos acquiring satellites. You've got everybody acquiring spectrum. Um, and you know, so you've just got lots of, lots of activity in that space. You're seeing convergence across uh, geographies as well. So if we think about Netflix launching across multiple countries uh, simultaneously last year, the, the cost of competing cross-border has come down significantly. And then lastly, this business, uh, this business model convergence, which was the example with, uh, you know, with Amazon and uh, Disney and Netflix. So those are the convergences that we're seeing at the moment, and uh, technology is probably the biggest of those. Well, Charles, what I just want to know is, is this a good thing or a bad thing for the media? Well, it's, it's a good thing. Look, a lot of the money at the moment is going to the technology players uh, in terms of the fact that they are delivering the access to the content. So if we look, for example, at the Nigeria market, which is, you know, which is forecast to grow you know, very strongly, 21.5% over the forecast period, uh, that'll see the market reach $9.9 .9 billion in, in 2022. But of the massive growth that we're seeing over the next five years, 90% of that is sitting in the internet access space. So a lot of that money is going towards obtaining access to the content, uh, and this leaves less disposable income to actually spend on the content. So it's a, it's a tough position for your entertainment and media companies who are providing the content, because a lot of people uh, from, a, you know, from a maturity perspective you know, in the African markets feel that once they've paid for the, con uh, for the access, they don't necessarily need to pay for the content. So that makes it quite challenging for your, for your e and players. I mean, at the bottom of it all, it's just all about revenue. Uh, care to talk us through the difference between you know, the growth in digital and non-digital revenue? So the growth is massively skewed towards, uh, towards, uh, non uh, towards digital revenue at the moment. Uh, there is still some growth oh, happening in the non-digital space. Uh, and you know, in the non-digital space, the, the primary growth that we're seeing across all of the African markets is in, um, is in the TV space. Uh, there is still some growth. Uh, the second largest um, you know, advertising segment in, in Nigeria uh, is in the out of home. Uh, you are starting to see, obviously, more and more digital panels going up within, uh, within you know, Lagos, uh, particularly. But the, the growth is highly skewed towards, uh, towards digital spend, and as I mentioned earlier, particularly in the internet access space. Mm. Uh, help me understand this uh, better. So still staying with the media, you know, with, with newspapers. We still get the newspapers at the newsstands to begin with. We have them online as well. Uh, what is the trend we're most likely to see I in a few years? I mean, television is still, do it still does what it does. At the same time, you have marketers pushing for content to be online, because of course most of uh, their audience, of course, have a mobile phone, tend to watch some of this content online as well. What do you see happening in the next five years? Are we gonna see, let's say five to 10 years, are we gonna see um, a, a clean up of terrestrial television and your uh, hard copy of the newspaper? What is it gonna be? So w what we typically see is we tend to follow, you know, Africa and South Africa as well, we tend to follow global trends, mm -hmm. um, you know, be it uh, you know, a five year delay or a 10 year delay. 
and very much from a global perspective, we are seeing that uh, that a lot of your traditional you know media segments, particularly in the print space, are are under pressure. Uh, they are in long-term decline, sure. um, and the reason for that is that um, you know the convenience of being able to obtain the news um, and also the uh, the cost of obtaining the news online is um, is simply cheaper than a lot of the print alternatives. Yes. So we don't expect that decline to reverse. Uh, it is going to continue as people naturally gravitate towards where they can obtain the news, you know, most easily and at the cheapest price. And for television? For television, uh, f with television, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different because you've got a quality of experience. Um, so in the TV space, I see. certainly within Africa, given the cost of data, given the connectivity, uh, the connectivity challenges that are present in Africa, the a satellite connection, even just your normal uh, terrestrial broadcasting, it offers a, a good quality experience for the consumer. So until you get to the point mm. that your connectivity and also the cost of being able to, to live stream uh, content reach the point that they are able to compete from an experience perspective with your traditional broadcast means, uh, we don't see TV um, following the same uh, decline that we are currently seeing in print. It's going to have I a see. lot more longevity about it.